how loud I need to speak. 225? 28 minutes. What, what's what's 28 plus 25? That's 33. But yeah, 33? Okay, 33. 33. 33. <clears throat> <clears throat> we good? Mm-hmm. We good? <laughs> <laughs> Is this how you be very funny? <laughs> Nervous. The intros are the worst part. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. Okay, so uh, welcome to the very first, I guess this will be the, the very first podcast of the Create Yourself podcast. Hold up, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Am I looking at the camera or are you? I, when we intro and then when we talk, we just... Oh, okay, good, good, good. No, you're hey. too close to me. <laughs> I gotta scoot back. Right, it's gonna throw the camera. I, like, you, you scoot in a oh, little bit. Right, I'll, right. I'll, I'll scoot out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't get the camera to you. <laughs> Is it... Okay, you're at the camera. I'm pretty yeah, sure you're yeah, at the yeah, camera yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, I'm ready now. It's fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to... <laughs> the first episode of the Create Yourself podcast. We have my boy... Nick here, aka Scott, aka In Effect, aka Abstract, aka. Am I missing anything? No, I think that's all it. All right, all yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. All Wait, right. do I have to speak into the to the mic? Right yeah, here? that would be helpful. Okay, you cool. know, just like, making sure you can scoot it closer to you if you need Ooh, to. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, like that. Mm-hmm. All right, cool, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Nick. Tell us about yourself. Why are you here today? <laughs> Why am I here today? Well, one, because you asked me. True. But two, I am a creator. Um, primarily in the dance space, but mm-hmm. lately I've been taking up writing short stories and poetry, and I dabble in some videography from here to mm-hmm. there, you know? So that's why I'm here, here to talk a little bit more about dance specifically, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we'll, we'll kind of, you know, dive into dance as a concept, and um, but then I also want to dive in a little bit to, like, all the other stuff that you're doing mm-hmm. as well. Um, but first off, we got to talk about dance. Let's get it. All right? So... Dance, like what, like, I guess, talk about like, okay, how long have you been dancing, your your kind of journey as a dancer, like kind of walk me through it a little bit. Um, Yeah, I actually started dancing back in middle school. I was mm-hmm. in eighth grade at the time. I just came to Texas. I was from Chicago originally. And I met a friend there who, I remember he was doing like windmills in the circle of the gymnasium. Hey. And I saw that, I was like, that's kind of clean. Let me go ahead and uh, let me get, let me talk to him. This is back yeah. when I was a little bit more extroverted, and mm. I would just go up to people randomly. But yeah, I talked to him, and he was kind of. What did you say to him? I was just like, "Hey, hey, man, that's cool. Like, can you teach me that? Like, mm. it was just basic, just like yeah, that. Yeah. You know, we were more more confident back then. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I went up to him, talked to him, and then he he showed me the windmill, but he actually showed me the wave more, which you mm. know, like waving and more popping that kind of branch of hip hop. Um, and then from there, I took it upon myself to go back home and practice it. Mm. And I remember looking at YouTube videos and finding other movements that I could do, like the sea walk or the glide. Mm. And I started adding in those. Sea walking was really big back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, that was a huge thing back then. So yeah. sea walking, and then I added in the glide. And then I remember coming back to school and I, like showing him all that I learned. And I think him, he was like, you know, oh, okay, you learned that. Let me learn some more stuff too. So oh. together, I kind of I think we built up this sort of rivalry in yeah. a sense and this like competitive nature but we were continuing pushing us ourselves forward and then you know we started entering things like pep rallies and Mm. going to like battles and dance battles and things like that around that area and then yeah from there in chicago this is in texas this is my first game in texas yeah and then yeah i came uh came to college and found dance team here and i think that just helped me get more involved with like the hip-hop scene Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. things of that nature um then yeah just kept doing that and doing that making more connections and learning more types of movement Mm. you know branched out into like contemporary or you know uh with my girlfriend i do like ballet sometimes Mm. and things like that so just continue adding more to the resume more to the portfolio and then just building and growing dang that's crazy that it it like all started just in middle school where it was just kind of like an innocent thing you know you're like Mm. wow that's really freaking cool and then from there like I guess you just felt that motivation to like mm-hmm. want to keep doing it. Like, yeah. What was that fuel? Like, do you know like why you wanted to keep doing it? Well, I think the main reason was because when I saw the dancing, when I saw that first him doing a windmill, obviously I didn't know what a windmill was at the time. Right. But when I saw him spinning around on the ground, it reminded me of like cartoons and anime mm. that I used to watch during that time. Cause I was a big like anime head. I was a big gamer. So, you know, seeing those types of movements like really inspired me. Mm. And I, I was like, wow, that looks so cool. It looks like something out of a video game. Mm. And I think that's what kind of prompted me to like learn it. And so when I'm learning it, as I'm dancing, it made me feel like I was a character right. in my own game. You know what I mean? Like a character in my own anime or something mm. like that. So, 
you know, I would take these these examples from him and then from like these shows and things that I watch and put that into my dancing. Mm. So I think that's kind of like what kept me motivated initially. Right. And then obviously once you grow and get better at something, it kind of always right. like you have this yearning to learn more and mm-hmm. this yearning to engage more with other dancers and, you know, figure out what they can do and then learn from them. And then just it constantly like it's like motivation on top of the top of the discipline on top of the consistency right. and then you just keep growing and growing and, and it's growing. cool because i feel like you had a really good chance to kind of change your environment several times like went from middle school mm-hmm. to high school mm-hmm. um and then to college right. and then post-college like each time like you get to kind of experiment and and get better and better and like have more perspectives mm-hmm. and see different kinds of dancers too you know like yeah. you weren't like just in one area doing it mm-hmm. the same thing but you were able to like branch out and like you traveled a lot to to take dance classes and, right, and stuff like that too right yeah yeah no uh that's a really good point just being able to change up the environment around me and the people who were around me mm. it kind of helped me from getting stale because mm. i think in the beginning while yeah i was learning from a lot of different people i remember i sort of took a inclination or this liking to this one specific dancer that i saw on youtube His, he goes by the name of blueprint he's from a mm-hmm. uh, crew called dragon house and I remember looking at him and I remember just literally copying his movement, like, you know, exactly how it was. And while it did help me get a fundamental understanding of my body, I think it also made me not have any sort of originality. Right. You know, because now I'm just a copy. I'm, I'm, I'm mimicking. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. imitating. So I think for a while I was built like that. And then even when I would go to these battles, people would say like, hey, you look like a dancer I saw on YouTube or you look like this like blueprint. Mm. You like this. And I would get that type of feedback. And I was like, ooh, I didn't like that feedback. Really? Yeah, no, I, I remember, it's actually funny. I actually went to a, a a convention and one of the crew members from Dragon House was teaching at that convention. His name's Cyrus. Uh-huh. Um, he was on So You Think You Dance. He like made a big, he like got second on the, on the competition show. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, he came there and I remember at the end of the night we had like this mock battle Mm -hmm. and I went out there whipping out all this stuff like that I I had thought that I created when in actuality it was just an imitation of someone I looked up to. And even he, he was like, look, you look exactly like Blueprint. Literally the guy from Dragon House said, you look exactly like Blueprint. And it was like, you have to find your own style. And I remember I took that, you know, it hurts. Yeah. That's like... Yeah, I God. feel like if I heard that, I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. And this is somebody like you literally have looked up to, like his, crew, right, right. You know, you look up to these people, and I remember getting that feedback, and I was just like, okay, I don't want to be like this, especially right. since I'm a someone who values authenticity so much. Sure, yeah. You know, the fact that I was being told I look like someone else mm-hmm. just rubbed me the wrong way, mm. and so I think that's why I started navigating to taking classes. Mm. That's why I started navigating to getting on teams and you know being a part of battles and learning from other people was because I wanted to you know, diversify right. my, the, the income of knowledge, you know right. what I'm saying? So I wanted to learn from all these different people so that I, I didn't have to look like this person anymore. Right. And it was a slow process, mm-hmm. but over time I started developing like, okay, I, I have this element. Let me, let me add a little bit of this. Let me add a little bit of groove. Right. Let me add a little bit of rock. Let me add a, let me add, oh, there's a contemporary. Okay, what, what, what can they do? Let me see how that, all right, how can I bridge the gap between my concepts, my, my conceptual mind, and bridge it to like a very movement-based full body, you know? How can mm. I take those elements from each? So just being allowing me, allowing me to do that and being involved in those things, I think, helped me grow as a dancer a lot more. Right, and that's kind of how you found your style. Yeah, exactly. Like, and and so, like, what would you say? Because obviously, like you said, like you know, taking different classes, mm-hmm. experiencing different dancers, and being able to kind of work on a foundational level and also conceptual level. But like, how do you feel like, or like, when do you feel like you found your style? Uh, good question. When do I feel like I found my style? I, I would honestly say that in the past couple years, maybe, maybe around my junior to senior year in college. Mm. Um, after we, we were part of a dance team, both of us, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a part of a dance team called The Process. And during that kind of initial stage, I was still finding myself, mm-hmm. you know, I remember talking to the director at the time, Kevin Middleton, like, hey, how can I engage my body more? How can I be more full body? Because he was a very full body dancer, yeah, but yeah. he still had this level of technicality. And I love that looking, looking at it. So, and I think at the time I was still very, I still had a little bit of that blueprint influence in me mm. that I kind of like, it, it's good, but I wanted to make it more. Yeah. Um, and then I think it was just doing those freestyle events with him and kind of just learning through him and then going outside of it, becoming a director of my own, mm-hmm. you know, like, uh, you know, company or organization, I guess. 
is when I went when I when it started to find my style. Like mm. I started to find like what what I wanted to dance. Right, like, right. You know, and I think I was able to somehow. It was like a mental barrier that I had. Right, yeah. like I was able to push past it and like, oh, okay. I can do all of this at once, you know. Mm. I can I can take all of these things that I have and put it at once, not just oh okay. Right now I'm doing tutting. Okay, right now I'm right. A, like I'm grooving, you know. Like right now I'm contemporary, like just fusing it all together, becoming more eclectic in that way. Mm. So I think that's something that like that's how you know like you hit that next level, right? Like mm. you said, like that barrier just kind of like because I think when we think about different styles of dance, it's kind of like separated mm -hmm. right like oh this is popping you know this is b-boying mm -hmm. this is contemporary like you said and it's like then whenever you're able to take those little fundamental things and kind of like blend it into your own thing and like use it all at once mm -hmm. you're like oh yeah <laughs> like now this feels good because also mm -hmm. like not only does this feel like me mm -hmm. but like it removes those limitations of what you can do exactly. as a dancer yeah no it, literally exactly that like i remember i remember you know there, it's sort of this it's this subconscious knowing, you mm. know, it's like, you know, that you've hit that level. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that now it's you, you know, you're no longer putting on this mask or, and I'm not saying that I was putting on a mask when I was dancing originally, but it, it just felt so authentic to right. me. Like the way I was moving, it felt so natural, it felt so right, you know? And even then I wouldn't say I'm nearly as good as I was then, then, or, you know, like I'm definitely a lot better now, mm -hmm. but at that time, I just remember feeling that I was like, okay, I want to hold on to this. Right. This is me. You know, this feels right. And so just taking that and be able to like put it all together on top of the musicality. Right. It just, I think it like really just changed the way I view dance mm. a lot too when I look at other people as well. Mm. So. so do you ever feel like now that, right, like in that time you were starting to find your style mm -hmm. and that's whenever you start dancing like you. Mm -hmm. So as your style like starts to transform or evolve, mm -hmm. like what does that look like? Mm. What do you mean? What does it look like in terms of like training or in terms of um... like, so say like at the time that you feel like you found your style mm -hmm. and what, what made you be able to like, not just stay stagnant in your mm -hmm. style. Cause okay. you know, there, there are dancers out there and not saying that this is a bad thing at all, but once they find their style, they sit in their Damn style, mm -hmm. you know, and that's perfectly fine. But yeah. I know for you, like you like to kind of push yourself to mm -hmm. always evolve and like, you never like to stay in the same like yeah. pocket. Mm -hmm. um, so like, what does that look like to you? Um, well, I think like in terms of, I think people who, genuinely like to push themselves it's more of a mental thing than it is a physical thing mm. you know because i think people who are naturally you know love to learn i think that's the basis of it you know you, you when you love to learn you want to learn more about the thing that you are interested in mm -hmm. and so for me if i'm taking dance as that example i didn't want to just stop where i was at dance because i enjoyed dance so much that i wanted to learn everything that it encompassed mm. so you know if there's another thing out there and it's crazy because when you when you learn something new, when you gather more information, you realize how, actually how much you don't know. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So and I think it's that thirst to grow that kind of contributed to me not staying stagnant. Mm. It's that thirst to be better for myself, not necessarily to, you know, for anybody else or to, you know, stay within one certain genre right. or style right. just because I just like to grow. I just like to mm. learn. I like to experience more new things you know more novelty and right just being able to like add that into myself makes me feel good mm. um and you know like i said there's other people who who do stay in the same style but they take that same concept of learning but they apply it to that same style mm. you know so there's people maybe who are like maybe they just love popping right but then they'll take popping and they're like okay how much how much can i learn more about popping you mm. know specifically same with like b-boy like hey this yeah. is b-boy how much can i learn more about b-boy right i do think that having variety kind of helps you lift this part up more mm. but you know in the same way they're still applying that thirst right and, you know that that growth right that they want. but just so, differently just like differently. one is more like focused towards a direct way mm -hmm. of dancing like a, like a genre right yeah it's like if you get really good in, in like uh say for music like rap right right like you exactly. get really deep into that you that rap bag much more about rap. but then it's like Think about if you were to start making alternative music exactly. or country music or rock, or, or whatever. Or rock yeah. you know? No, yeah, and, and it's it's exactly that. And sometimes I even think that it's kind of bad that I moved to so many different styles. Right, because you feel like you're a jack of all trades exactly. kind of Exactly, yeah. It's like, you know, I'm never really a master of one thing because I've applied so many to myself. So it's, it has its pros and cons, and I think one of the cons is that you really have no foundation. Mm. You know, like, yeah, I can do this, stuff, like what I originally started out with the blueprint right. things, like, yeah, I can I can, I can, can stay there, and I, I know I have a good hold of that, but 
I never completely stuck in it for so long that it's at yeah. this like supreme like right. I can tell you everything about it there is to about this style you know I'm not like that because I I was like oh this looks interesting oh this looks interesting let me try that mm-hmm, oh this mm-hmm. looks interesting let me try that you know what I'm saying so it's a it's a pros and cons sure. thing, but I think it helps you become more versatile mm-hmm. for me and I think I the way that I want my dance to be I need it to be versatile right and I think like maybe that's what's kept you so engaged in dancing as well mm-hmm. is because that's what I love about dance and just like a lot of different like outlets right like even with art if you're just Say you're so used to digital art, but then you start doing painting or say you start doing um, charcoal or something like that. Like you're able to kind of like be in one area, but Mm. kind of like venture out because there's so many things. And I think a lot of times people get bored of Mm. things, right? Like say if I'm only doing b-boying and that's all I do. And then there's some point where say like I break something or I can't do anything anymore. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like I can either wait for it or, you know, I can go experiment and Mm. try something else. But like. Maybe that's why, like, you're like, oh, there's so many cool things. It's like your brain is never, like, mm-hmm. bored. Yeah, you know? exactly. And, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I have had moments where I've quit dance for mm-hmm. quit dance for a, a good amount of time where I'll be like, mm, I'm not feeling it anymore. But I think the same way I, t- I, I take a different approach to that same type of thinking of trying something new, I'll just go to a different type of art mm. or a different type of whatever, you know? Maybe I want to get into woodworking. And sometimes if you really pay attention, you can... Use your examples from other things in your life to build the other, you know, the main thing that you were on originally. Right. You know, sometimes I look at woodworking and the way they move the, mm. the, move the wood, and I'm like, uh, interesting. The patience they have with this. Or, ooh, I like the way they draw their their arms back and then push forward. You know, like you some like just things like that, or the way they draw. Like, okay, how can I, how can I take that right. into my into my own? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. how can I see that example and, and put it into something else. I think you do that for all types of right. art or anything in general. And, that, and that's funny because that's one of my questions I was going to oh. ask you is like, <laughs> like, do you feel like, you know, because... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Vigie. <laughs> do you feel like because, you know, like, have you ever applied like dancing to something else, like the ability to learn dance and like what you've learned in dance, have you applied that to other creative outlets? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> mm. all the time. <laughs> I feel like... Um, for example, um, when it comes to like, I'm just using an example I thought about the yeah. other day, chess. Mm. <laughs> it's not really a creative out. Ah, well, it could be creative depending sure. on how you view it. But, you know, chess, there's, you're pretty much, there's pieces on a board. I see them as formations. Mm. Like, and a formations, we usually use formations in dance to direct bodies, you know, then like say which which way is this body is going to go in correlation to this body and right like, how can i get this person over here to this body when i look at chess i look at it the same way you know mm. okay if i want to go here to t- capture this person how do i go you know how do right, i com- right. how do i command the board and i could take that same approach and apply it to the stage and like mm. hey how can i command the stage to you know with the lighting and this and that how can i get it to direct the exact view that i would like it to be um and yeah like i feel like even when it comes to the more minute technical details of like physical movement mm. i could take it and look at um you know I, when i was getting into writing and things like that um there's actually a lot of times where i'll write something and it reminds me of the way that i dance mm. you know because if you think about it like your dance is your signature yeah you know it's it's your style you know it's this the way you show your fingerprint to the world same with like you know your actual signature mm. or the way you write you know it's all your interpretation i feel like i apply these same concepts to each artistic endeavor that i do you're spitting straight fat. Like, <laughs> you're, you're spitting some straight. <laughs> Not straight. It's like, it's like your fingerprint to the world. Like that's mm-hmm. that's kind of really cool, like cool to think about. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's kind of like your style, your individuality, and in, in all the things that you do mm-hmm. is like your fingerprint on the world. Like exactly. it's who you are. Right. You know, yeah. and it's it's cool because it's it's like you took something that like say chess mm-hmm. that maybe people wouldn't deem as like naturally creative, mm-hmm. but you were able to apply creative like mm-hmm. maybe processes or ways of thinking yeah. to that. And it's crazy because you can also do the vice versa. You know, you can see chess as a very analytical mm. way of, you know, moving through something or creating something. Uh, you could take take the, the way they logically have to deduce certain, you know, ways in which they move their pieces. And I could apply that same thing to my, maybe my body. Maybe like, how do I move this in order to get here? You know, mm. how, do I, how do I move my shoulder to connect to my elbow? You know, like things like that. So I feel like, the crazy thing about art and things in general is that you can always apply something from something else. You can mm. always apply 
a knowledge from a specific skill into another skill. Mm. You just got to be creative in how you think about it. Right. You know? And I was even thinking too, like, like it's it's even like how you speak and how you move. Like, like to to be able to do this, like, oh. <laughs> like it's the dancing. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, you're just true. able to like kind of like you almost like can really communicate in a different way too. Yeah, because if you think about it, like body language is communication. Yeah. It's a nonverbal way of communicating. That's why dance, a lot of times they dance, you, you speak with your body, you speak mm. with your movement. So I think, you know, a lot of people, they think that, oh, you just have to stand up straight and just talk with words. And while it's very powerful, it can be, the way we present ourselves through body language is how we convey a lot of messages mm. that you don't see or mm. that you don't hear, you mm. know? So, um, yeah, I feel, like, I, I feel like that's naturally why yeah. I like, I like to like, engage yeah, with like my body move. as well, you know, when I'm speaking. So yeah, that's a good do, point, though. Do you ever feel like, like, not weird, but like, do you ever feel because I, I know like, whenever I like say I'm walking through, like today I was in in PetSmart getting Benji's food, Come on, and Smart. I was sitting there like listening to some music, you know, I'm like over here like whatever, just kind of like messing around, like hearing some music, I'm like uh, and I'm like dancing. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like other people look at you like you're weird? Oh, 100%. Which is like, how, like just how you move through life? Oh, yeah, definitely. I remember, because I'm the same way, yeah. you know? <laughs> I be, well, I haven't looked. I haven't had my AirPods or anything, any type of musical, like, mobile, audible device at all mm -hmm. for the past couple months, because I've lost my old AirPods. But um, even then, I'll still... I'm really, I'm really crazy because right. I'll listen to like the wind and I'm like, oh, that's a beat. <laughs> that's a beat. Like, like I'm like, ooh, that's nice. And I'll just be acting. I, I feel like I act weird in public a lot of times, but I think something I had to get in my head was that nobody's really paying attention. That's true. No one really cares. Mm. Yeah, they might think you're weird for a little bit, but when you go see them again. Yeah, and <laughs> they're know? not going to remember that. Yeah. So, you know, just kind of like, I'm in my whole own world a lot of times. I even talk to myself in public a lot of times too. Mm. So it's just always i've always you know those inklings of yeah, like yeah. am i being weird yeah, 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 <laughs> it's, yeah. It's strange yeah but i'm like you know what well, we probably all do it it's right, fine right it's, it's okay like yeah, someone else like, does too okay unless like somebody's really staring at me then i'm like oh god <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> has that uh, happened oh multiple times really yeah and they're just like i remember i was in the walmart one time getting jiggy in the in the in the water aisle <laughs> getting jiggy with it i was in with the bottles i was going stupid and a dude walked by he really literally looked at me stared at me for about two seconds and i, and I said and you know, you, try, you remember you try to play it off and be like, oh, like I was just mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, looking mm -hmm. at the water, but you know, you know, they know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's just that, you know, they really, I don't know why they have to stare at you for so long. I'm just like, hey, you could have, you could have walked away. Right, you know? right. Maybe, maybe you, you think did. it's interesting. Maybe, maybe because like, this is what I've always That's thought, right? I don't know what other people think. And maybe I need to talk to more people and ask them their opinion on this. But mm -hmm. like, because we're dancers, because we're movers, because mm -hmm. we, we kind of have this way of like moving through life. I wonder if people who don't have that way of life, do they look at you like, that's so cool? Or do they just think that you're just like, I want to know what it's like from someone who doesn't. Mm. Well, dance. actually, you know, it's funny that you bring this up because last night I went to an orchestra. Mm. Mm. Um, it was like an anime orchestra. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there were a lot of violinists and, a, and I, I believe it's called a celloist. I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm saying that correctly, but I was looking at them. I was like, wow, that's so amazing. Like, that's incredible, mm. you know? And I was thinking... You know, I feel like I've seen so much dance stuff. I, I watched a lot of dance in my life that at this point, I kind of know what I like and what I don't like, right, and what's right. good and what's not good, mm -hmm. or what's of quality. You had that eye for yeah, it. Yeah, you know, you get you develop this eye and this, and this ear for the music and things like that. So, but when I'm watching them, it seems so like incredible yeah. to me because I've never experienced that before. Mm. And I thought that same question, you know, to them, or like to, right. to me, you know, they right. seem like, wow, like if they were in the, if they were in the, if they were in Walmart, like just kind of like, thinking about the notes, what I, like, I would probably think that was, like, capital, right. you know, but, you know, to them, it's probably everyday life. Right. Same with us, like, as dancers, like, this is every day, we, we, you know, we dance in the aisles, and we, right. and we, and this is how we move through life, mm. but someone else of a different creative endeavor, they move through life a little bit differently, but it's captivating to us, so I think right. you're, you're right in that, in that yeah. sense that it, it does draw you in, because it's different than what you're used to. Right, and it's cool, because it shows you like who they are a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, you know? exactly. You get a little peek into how they right. live life, how they view the world, yeah. how, they, how they go about, you know, their specific, yeah. you know, endeavor. And it's just so cool, like, to see. I remember I was watching last night. I was like, oh, my God, they're so clean. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> like, I wish I could just become friends with them so I could know how right. you think. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> yeah. I, I thought that same thing. I saw a concert um, of this band called The Rex. Okay. And I went with my sister. And I was watching, like, this guy named Arlie opened up. And the way he was just, like, mm. performing and just, like, going dumb. And then... Uh, his drummer was just like going doom, stupid doom, 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 and like just going dumb and i was like and then i saw him in the bathroom and 
Dude, I wanted to ask him. <laughs> you saw him in the bathroom. I, I literally, because he was just, you know, acting like everyone just in there. I don't think they, like, noticed him. But he was, like, he kind of walked. And I was like, hey, you, like, killed that. Like, mm. killed yeah, totally? that. Yeah. yeah and he was like, he was like, hey, dude, I really appreciate that. And then I, I went to go pee, and I was like, dang it. I kind of want to just <laughs> talk, talk to him. To him. Like, yeah. I just want to learn. Like, because mm. that's such a cool thing that I we know. don't get to experience. Exactly. But, like. I guess some people might think of that about us. Like, you mm. know, we were dancers, we're doing this, we're performing. They're like, wow, that looks like like just a dream. Yeah. You know? I know, yeah. I, I think about that too. I remember, you know, just going through the past shows that I've been to because I've been to a couple of just dance performances. And I look out into the crowd and everybody's just so like, wow, like I can't believe that. And it's crazy because I think over time I've become in a way desensitized to it mm. because I see it so often. Right, right. You know, and I've seen... And obviously you watch on YouTube and other places and I've been to conventions and things where you see like the top of the top. Mm -hmm. And so I think subconsciously I, I start to compare the top to what I see here. And then she's like, oh, okay, is that okay? Is that good? Whatever. Yeah, mm. yeah. But like I know to other people who may not have experienced that same life as me. Right. They see that and I'm like, oh my God. Right. That's incredible. Right. And you know, they, that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that they see it that way because that's the exact same way I would see like an orchestra right. or a band or someone rapping. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh. So cool. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's why it's so important to like, like you said, like go out and explore different perspectives and yeah. different creatives and ways of doing things. Because I feel like in a way you almost get to experience life for like a quick, mm. you know, couple minutes or mm. whatever it is through someone else's cool. eyes. Yep, you know go. what I'm saying? Like to be able, like when I went to UMF and I was like watching people dance, it's like I was seeing what they've been working on. Mm -hmm. You know, like they've been working on themselves, and I'm like. It's almost like I put myself in the battle. Like mm -hmm. I'm like literally being them, like yeah. while they're battling, and I'm like, mm -hmm. like I just feel like I'm doing this right I now. Know, you know, that's so cool. Like you literally get to watch them dance and just see them. Like you said, you get to see it through their eye. Mm -hmm. Like even how they interpret things. It's just like when I see in their movement, I'm like, oh, I like that choice they made right there. Because mm. it's all just a series of choices, and it's right. just you know they get to make this, and I'm like, that's clean. Like that, that's super cool. How you 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 chose that moment. Right. Maybe I would have done differently, but that's so interesting how you chose that. You know, so. I, 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 it's funny, like when I was recording a little thing earlier, I was talking about people who choose really good moments. Mm. And I was like, I feel like that's what makes such great performances mm -hmm. is people who like they're themselves, but then they choose times to really show like moments, mm -hmm. you know, and like a moment can do so much. Like you can do all like amazing stuff in between, but the second you do it, uh, yeah, like it's just yeah. like mm -hmm. those moments just mm -hmm. like encapsulate you. You're like, well, it, it brings you back down because sometimes people can get. I think of it like um, sometimes like very lyrical rappers. Mm -hmm. They're so lyrical and like some people have no idea what they're saying. Yeah. Right. But then they said, da, 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 and I da, na, na, na. And they catch on that. And they catch on that. Like, yeah. na, 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 na. <laughs> and then they, they go back into it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like whenever you're like making art to showcase to people, it's important that you have moments because mm -hmm. those moments is what keeps their attention pulling back. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a lot to process for people oh, who yeah, don't normally process that kind of stuff. No, you know? Yeah. No, I. And that's something that I had to learn as well when it comes to, you know, dance. Because I feel like all these things kind of lead you into bigger and more things. Like, you know, I started off just dancing in my room, just freestyling. And that led me to choreography. Choreography led me to stage and stage led me mm. direction. Mm -hmm. You know, so I you go through it and you start to see how you should, in a sense, not how you should, but how you can organize right. the, the movement or the, the direction of it to make it more captivating to an audience, to help them to understand. Right. You know, because I think that's the entire point when you when you in any type of art space is like how can i make it to where you can take this you mm. know how can i com com uh, simplify a complex right. you know form or idea that i have in my head to in a digestible manner for you to understand right. so and i think moments is a, obviously a great way of doing that is that you know like i said like you said you can have all this technical stuff but you know not everyone's going to catch all this minute details right. you know so you have to kind of break up the monotony mm -hmm. and i think that's all that's really what it is is breaking up the monotony with your body, but also with the music, maybe with the lights or maybe with something else right. that can change mm. it a little bit because it's that it's in that dy dynamicness of the, of the dance that causes you to like, oh, okay, right. this is clean. You're, I'm pretty much, like I said to you before, like directing the eye of the viewer, which is, know? which is interesting. Cause I feel like a lot of people will struggle with that mm -hmm. for the reason that they don't want to limit their expression mm -hmm. like they want to express how they want to express yeah and i think that's completely fine and you should do that in a lot of different areas mm -hmm. but if you're going to choose to showcase it or perform mm -hmm. or it's almost like giving your art to someone else or letting someone else in on your mm -hmm. art i think that's the key to it right like yeah. making sure that they can digest it mm -hmm. because oftentimes like i'll see like i'll kind of go back to the rapper example where people are super lyrical mm -hmm. and they're like i'm so underrated 
Mm-hmm. No, like, I don't get, like, this just goes above everybody else's heads. But it's like, because your raps are, yeah, it's and, it's and, it. and like, if people don't want to sit down and be intentional about listening, it's really hard for them to mm-hmm. appreciate it. Yeah. You know, you kind of have to give them, like, baby food, mm-hmm. you know? Because it's safe, like, for dancers, right? If, if you do something cool, like, if you're doing all this stuff and they can't understand what to appreciate, mm-hmm. they're going to be like, that was a lot. Yeah, no, you know? that's true. And I, I think that, and it's something that I've been trying to really apply to my life or any type of create creation I do is that take the notion that, you, I know they say, you know, creativity lies outside the box, but I actually mm-hmm. think it lies within it. You know, when you mm-hmm. give yourself parameters, you know, to work under, you start creating, you know, like if I said, it's, simpl- it's, it's, it's how we give ourselves prompts in dance. If I say like, hey, you know, imagine that you're in water and you know, you're in, you're in water the whole time it's going to change how you move. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, or if I say, you know, um, only dance, but you can only dance starting with your right hand first. So any move comes from your right hand. You know, mm. you're going to start doing different things with your right hand because you're forcing your brain to, brain to have a parameter to work under. And that way you're creating mm. that way. You know, so I think like when it comes to the creation process, taking these parameters or giving yourself kind of a limit to work under doesn't necessarily, like you said, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily limit you. It just gives you more options to work with. You know, you, you, you're allowed to see like even the smallest thing from a right. different point of view. You know? Right. It almost gives your creativity a focus. Yeah. So if like in the rapping example, you could say, you know, how about every other five bars I have to, I have to change up my tempo mm. or every other five bars I, I can't, you know, use the, the same kind of lyrical uh, cadence. Right. You know, just changing up things like that can help you break up, like I said, the monotony, make it more dynamic. Mm. You know, giving yourself limits to work under doesn't necessarily limit you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That was fire. <laughs> oh, also that came with <laughs> We will be right back. <laughs> Chew on that. Chew, that. This is a moment. <laughs> Chew on the moment, okay? Just <laughs> give me a second. <laughs> but back to it. Mm-hmm. Um, that, okay, like creating within the box. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. That's a really interesting concept to think about because I think a lot of people like... It, that actually kind of helped me a lot like from, from hearing that because I mm-hmm. think sometimes I'm like, I want to create in a way that feels very free authentic, yeah. you know very authentic mm-hmm. very me no I, I i get that you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but like by you're right by giving yourself a prompt you can actually explore something a little bit deeper because mm-hmm. i think sometimes whenever i try to explore things my mind goes in so many different directions yeah. that i don't come out with anything mm-hmm. or nothing that feels truly good mm-hmm. but you're right whenever i have a prompt or i have a focus like I'm able to kind of like really hone Brown in your, yeah. and then create like within that space, mm-hmm. right? Explore within this box that allows me to to make something that's digestible and that feels like a formulated thought. Yeah, you know? exactly. And I, I think there's a lot of times when, <clears throat> you know, I'll, I'll get like blocks in my choreography. I'm like, oh God, you know, am I gonna, <laughs> mm-hmm. like, I, I can't think of anything. I can't do anything. Just taking a second to limit, like not limit yourself, but just give yourself something to work under. You know, how, where can I start? You know, yeah. like, okay, I can't, I can't think of this movie because I'm thinking too broadly at right. this point. Let me, let me narrow it down right here. First, let me focus on this part of the song. Within this part of the song, I'm only going to focus on doing movements with my legs. Mm. Just start moving. Mm. Eventually, you'll find something, and that can be your bridge to connect, connect, connect. Mm. Same thing with, like you said, with the rap and everything. Like, you know, just finding that that thing that you can connect, like start with, mm. narrowing down everything, narrowing down, narrowing down, start here, and then from there, exploring out, mm. you know? So. And I think that's what's cool too, because it's almost like a lot of creativity is problem solving. True. You know? As I say, you gotta look, like I said with the chess example, right. you know, you could take that analytical deduction side and apply it to, uh, you know, creativity. Because, mm-hmm. you know, even, I think actually, to be honest, a lot of what we do creatively there's actually a lot of the logical deducing problem solving aspect of it. I agree. It's probably even more so majority that, you know, because even if I think like designing something, you know, yeah, you have the cre- actual creative idea. Like if I was taking this painting, like I actually created this, but then you gotta think, okay, how do I make it onto a canvas? What right. dimensions do I have the canvas at? You know, where do I place it unks in the home? You know, there's so many like logical problem solving things that you do that it's honestly, that's probably the most important part of the process, not mm. just necessarily creating the, the initial movement. Cause yeah, I can create the movement, but then like, if I want to do a video, like where I'm going to shoot it. That's, that's a great to... point. Cause you can have like, I've seen people who have amazing choreography or amazing ways of dancing, mm-hmm. but it's something about the way that you like, um, present it, present it mm-hmm. like that makes the entire difference. Yeah, 100%. Like who's that guy? I think his name's like John gifted or something like mm-hmm. that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 
like his videos, like the fisheye lens mm-hmm. and like the way he's able to like, like if you it's were to just do be. this in just like a, like a regular setting, I don't like, I, it would be amazing still, mm-hmm. but the way that he does it, the way that he packaged it up yeah. and like made it be like, and then how is it going to look like on a phone mm-hmm. and how is it going to look like here and where, what angle do I need to set the camera up and, and where should my, my focuses be right, like, exactly. it's so like yeah. captive yeah, and that's what makes it so good. Doing all that problem solving, doing all that, you know, okay, this is, this is the art. This is the art here. Okay, how do I present it? What do I need? Mm. What is everything that I can do in order to make this exactly how I intend it to mm. for an audience? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think those are all parts of the process. And, you know, like, yeah, you have to have this level of, of authenticity when you're creating the art, but you also got to think about that stuff too. Mm. Even if you're trying to, like, sell it to a bit, you know, for a business or, you know, right. you want to make this, you know, a job, there is, uh, even with art, there's a whole business side of it too when it comes to like marketing and management and you know making sure that things are following tasks and mm-hmm. lines and duties you know that's there's a lot of stuff that people don't really think about art or right. you know when when they when they're first getting into it they just think oh I can just create and just post it and right. that's great you know right. no, but there's a lot of going to it that, that that's the difference between like somebody who um, like does art stuff to, mm-hmm. to, to be an artist, right? Mm-hmm. They really enjoy being artists for themselves. Yeah. But then I think whenever you go and into the world and you're either trying to make something of yourself, mm-hmm. you're trying to create content around it, you're trying to do all that stuff, you have to really like look at all these other aspects that are really, really important. Yeah. And I know like they're not things that people want to do. No, like trust me. when no, I dropped no. my EP, I was like, yeah. I do not want to market this. Like, oh, and God. I didn't, you know, no, like yeah. I really like we did a little bit of it, but I know post EP, I was supposed to do a lot more. Yeah. It just but, depends on what your intentions are. Exactly. You know? Like if you're just making art to make art and dance and have fun with it, go, yeah. you know, go crazy. But you know, I think depending on what you're trying to do with it, obviously we're, it takes different things, mm-hmm. you know, it takes, and, but I think problem solving is the main thing within any of those things, you know? So, mm. You know, if you're making a, a dance piece, you still have the problem solved. Yeah. You got to figure out how you're going to get from move to move. You know, it just takes on a different encompass when you, you know, doing like when you're maybe doing it for a video or doing right. it for a, a performance. Then it takes a little bit of different problem solving. Like, okay, how is it going to look in, in, a st- in a stage scene or on a video? Same with any other creative endeavor. Mm. But, you know, I just think it's always that problem solving logical yep. analysis mixed with the authenticity and the creativity. Together. Mm. And that just makes like just like the ultimate. Yeah, because then you got a, a like you said a formulated thought, a formulated right. product. So, so, so now that like you've you kind of moved on from like you used to battle a lot, you used to you know do a lot of performances. You were just with CRL doing some performances mm-hmm. with Unity. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, what do you feel like like where is dance kind of calling you now? Mm. Um, I think now, as you, as you heard, I feel like I've been doing a lot of things for other people, which I've loved and they've been great. But I think now I have my own ideas, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I have my own type of vision and things that I want to do. So when it comes to dance specifically, I think I'm trying to get to a, a spot where I can just create my own content. Mm. Here, I hate using the word content, but create my own art. Right, right. Um, I can create, you know, the, my vision and how I see things and, you know, coming up with my own choreography or my own you know, videos or whatever the case may be. And mostly around the video performing realm, you know, sharing art in that way, my mm. art, instead of being a part of someone else's art. Right. You know, which I'll still, you know, collab with people, but yeah, 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 yeah. but I, guess I I think that's the direction that I'm heading in now. Yeah. I think you go in and out of that a lot. Like yeah. you go into, like you really work on yourself and you kind of have that exploration and mm-hmm. pushing yourself and then you'll kind of like, kind of go towards other people and really mingle and like, you know, yeah. do that with them. And then mm. you go back and being like, okay, I think I feel like I'm hitting this limit of what I can do with people. Mm. So I need to take a step back and do what I can with myself Yeah, and then continue. No, yeah, that's, that's what I mean. I feel like I go into the, this hibernation kind of vibe where I'm just soaking in everything. I'm, I'm a sponge. I'm, I'm taking mm. knowledge from different sources and not just dance. Like I said, I, I take it from other things like reading and writing and, you know, videography and um, maybe even like I just other thing like people and yeah. conversations. And I, I take these things and I kind of like hoard them mm. in a sense. But then, you know, it gets so over overloaded inside of you that I'm just like, OK, yeah, now it's time to take everything I learned, everything that I've experienced, everything that I've cultivated mm-hmm. and push it outward right you know, make it external mm. so I, and i think that's where i'm at right now like you said it just while i have loved collaborating with people and you know being able to meet different people and 
especially within the dance space, now it's just like, okay, it's my turn. You know, right. yeah. it's my turn to add, right. you know, instead of consume. Mm. So put into the world what I have in my mind. Yeah, no, exactly. I think it's really cool too, because it, it really almost gives you a sense of like a bookmark or like yeah. um kind of like a, a good point. yeah, like a checkpoint. Mm. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like you're like, okay, you're doing all this stuff, like, you know, on these quests and everything. And then you kind of like, boom, have checkpoints, whether that be performances, showcases, mm. Things that you kind of almost put out into the world, yeah. And then it's like, okay, now time to go back on my journey, continue to grind, continue to grow, continue mm -hmm. to level up, yeah. And then, boom, I can come back out, Bam. show that side of me, until I feel like, okay, that's good, mm -hmm. go back in, yeah. you know. And I think a lot of it came from the reason why I wasn't was I'm one of those people. I, I feel like I can't force art. I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't force the creation because when I force it, it doesn't ever come out as well as i want it to be and i know people say you know just start which is right. i think is great advice because i i'm one of those people i have a bias towards sitting in and hoarding in the information right when i should have a bias towards action mm. you know i i would love to be out there and just putting things in, in into the world but i don't know i i feel like sometimes it just doesn't it just doesn't feel right, right for me and i think that's where, where i battle also that authenticity like what am i am i doing this because i want to do this or am i doing this because right. i feel like i need to do this and i think some of my greatest creations was when I had something to say mm. was when I you know yeah. had something that I felt like I needed to put into the world you know when I shot my fear X freedom video I felt like I had something to put into the world mm. when I shot when I shot you know the journal thoughts and things like that I feel like okay this is something I need to say you know this is coming from me and so I I'm, st I'm trying to you know put in that whole approach of having action and putting things out in the world even when you're not really sure mm. but still pushing that forward but also just taking the things that i've learned and cultivated and formulating right. it and saying okay this is what i need to say this is what i have to say and, and when do you like when is it like that moment like do like how do you just know it's like time mm -hmm. to do it because i feel like a lot of times like like for me for example like when i'm making music sometimes i feel like i have things to say sometimes i'm just like i want to make music but then i'm making music i'm like i'm not saying anything mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but like i don't know when that moment Mm. comes around yeah you know and i think sometimes like that's the difference between like like are you just gonna sit around and not do anything mm -hmm. or are you gonna like what are you doing in the in the yeah. meantime to explore that and it's hard because i feel like in our culture we have a very productivity hustle type culture mm -hmm. so when you're not doing something it feels like you're, you feel wrong yeah <laughs> you know yeah. but um i think that yearning that you have you know you say like i want to make music i just don't know what i like am i gonna say anything? like do i do mm. i have anything to say you know I think it's within that yearning that you can find what you want to say. Mm. You know, I think it's within that yearning for something because you know, there's a lot of times where like I I want to do this, but there's you know how many times I, say, yeah. I want to do this, but I just don't know. Yeah, you know, it's within that that I do know. I just have to you know I just have to get it out there. And sometimes mm. you just got a brain dump. Mm. Sometimes you just have to be okay with it being trash. <laughs> mm. You have to be okay with like making it making mistakes and it not turning out the way you want it to be. You know, and I, and I think that's what I'm trying to do now is just really, you know, I know I have something to say, but sometimes I don't know the, the maybe the exact medium I want to say it in or the direction I want to go in. But sometimes you just have to like, yeah, and that's when I think that that, that action comes in, 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 in clutch right there is that mm. you have to it just push, right, push through that for a little bit. I, I, I see it all the time when I'm reading books. Like there's so many times I read like a couple, like a chapter of the book. I'm like, this is kind of trash. Yeah. But I like, I want to read it. Right. It's that yearning to read it. And I'm just like, I, I force myself. I, I kind of like, okay, let me just read a page. Let me just read two pages. Oh, okay, this is starting to pick right, up. Right, right. Starting to get interesting, you know? Same thing with the creative process. Don't you think all of us at one point when you started creating something, you said, this is trash. I don't want right. to do this anymore. But then we kept pushing. And it's like, oh, I actually kind of like this. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the creative process. We have to go through that. And if you have that yearning to do it, I think then you should. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then then that's, you might, you, that, you owe it to yourself too because you know you want to right it's just you have to get through that kind of yeah like, messy that, it's like process. you just it's like you have to start in order to give yourself a starting point yeah. you know because like if not mm -hmm. if you just and then you just give up mm -hmm. and it's like you were never gonna be able to see it through yeah and if, i think like that's why like people say like fall in love with the journey mm -hmm. because it's like the journey is is the beautiful part and in journeys there's hardship mm -hmm. there's struggles yeah there's places of you feel like giving up there's places of being unconfident mm -hmm. but within that and through that once mm -hmm. you get to the end it's always worth it yeah exactly and I, you, you, and yeah just to answer your question like that's when you 
that's when you know you need to do something. Mm. It's when you have that, you know, when it's just like, okay, I want to do it for whatever reason. I'm not doing it, but you know, I'm sacrificing something here. Mm. You know, I, I'm either sacrificing, you know, like time because I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it. I'd rather stay in bed. And yeah, you could do that, but you're sacrificing like what what it could be, right? You know, or you can do it. And sacrifice the fear of like you know starting and getting through and may, it may not working you know so mm. it's just either way you're sacrificing something right and to be honest the time is going to move anyway right <laughs> you know it's going to happen regardless yep. so i think it's just through that just pushing through those like those those feelings and those thoughts and really giving yourself a, a chance yeah um and that's important yeah and like i just think that you don't even have to do and something for me i'm really big on Starting small. Mm. <laughs> I'm really big on that because I think that's helped me create the habits that I would like in my life is just, you know, starting at the very smallest amount of things that I can do. If you say, hey, I want to I make a song. Just don't know what. Don't think I have anything to say, but I want to make a song. You know, write like one, one, right. one line or listen to, go look online for a track or, you know, produce or go find someone who can produce this. Like do right. one step, just one right. thing. And you know, most times when we do that one thing, we're like, "Well, I'm already doing it." It's right, kind of like when you well. wash it. It's kind of like when you wash the dish, and you're like, "Well, might as well clean the whole <laughs> might hot as well kitchen do now." It. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just giving you that 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 step. You know, giving yourself that cue to just mm. okay, let me go ahead and start. You know, so. and ties into the the book that you read. You I know, know like yeah, like, like yeah. this, the Atomic Habits, where it's like mm. you just do a little bit, like yeah. just one thing that's mm-hmm. super small, but in the direction of where you want to go. Yeah. And by default, you're gonna be like, it's it's just like saying I'm gonna only read for five minutes tonight, mm-hmm. and you read for five minutes, and you're like. I might as well finish the chapter. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, t- I feel like that book has low-key changed my life. Atomic Habits, mm. read it. Mm. But um, you, it, that whole idea of like making a making it an obvious cue in your life. So if I see, you know, like you said, the book, if the book's on the bed, then I'm like, okay, that's my cue, mm. you know, that I can go read it. And uh, if I make the reward attractive, like if I read this, maybe, maybe you can even use that to do something that you want to do. So let's mm. say like, um, I want to make a song, but I also want to watch Rick and Morty. Okay. If I write, if I write two lines, I can watch, I can watch five minutes of Rick and Morty. You know, like just uh, giving yourself yeah, yeah. like things or, or stack the habits to where they all like line up together to where you're still pushing forward. Even if it's such a small amount, even if it's only like two minutes, you're still always pushing forward. This book. No, for real. I will let you borrow. Yeah. Because honestly, I think that's like, I think sometimes like we get into this mode of almost like resenting what we're trying to do mm-hmm. because it's like, it's like, say it's like, okay, I need to make this, I need to make music and I want to make music but I could just play Apex. Mm. And then you play Apex and you feel so guilty and then you end up presenting the mm. fact that, you know, all this yeah. stuff. There's just a bunch of bad feelings. But mm-hmm. I think that's a really good way to say, you know what? I don't know what I can create tonight, mm. but let me just write two two sentences or two two bars or maybe like an eight, you know, eight bar or whatever mm. it is. And then I can go play yeah, Apex, exactly. guilt-free. I know, yeah, because then at least you know when you go to bed at night, you did something to push right. you towards the thing that you wanted to do. Mm. Something. You know, it doesn't have to be the biggest thing. And I think that's why a lot of times with our generation, I fall into the trap heavy too, is yeah. that we, we want it, you know, we want, we're, we're addicted to instant gratification. Mm-hmm. So we want it now. You know, we want the success, we want the fame, but we don't want any of the work that gets there. Yeah. So we, you know, we try to do all these things in one night. Same reason why we cram before a test or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like we just... Instead of putting in proper steps to do a little bit every day, you know, to get 1% better, we're just, you know, we try to cram all this into one right. thing and then we don't have a product that we're proud of. Yeah. You know, or we don't have a, a habit that we're proud of or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So it's just starting off little. It's, it's starting off and, and just like it doesn't have to be perfect, yeah. you know, and I think like that's how I felt about this podcast because honestly, like I wanted... Um, uh, a better place to do it. I wanted a better studio space mm-hmm. and I wanted like better lighting. I wanted a better, I wanted multiple cameras everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wanted, you, start where you're at, you, you know, know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. and cause the thing is if I waited around till mm-hmm. I had enough, mm-hmm. would I have ever started? Mm-hmm. Because, cause right. Cause it's, it, it's so grandiose of mm-hmm. what you want to accomplish, but it's like, but when I get there, like, what have I done for Like, have I had the conversations? Because yeah. if not, it could be a great studio. But if I didn't even start at the very basics of it, mm. how can I expect to even grow? Yeah, that's a You know what point. I'm saying? Yeah, I feel like we constantly set ourselves up, okay, well, I'm doing this. And, and then I think we trick our brains to think that we move towards our goal. And we actually really yeah. haven't that much because, you know, like, there's so many times where I was like, I'm going to start a YouTube video or I'm going to make a YouTube video. And, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I'll buy the camera. And, yeah, like, it, it, it helps me. But I already had a camera on my phone. Right. You know, like I got to use it right then. And then, you know, I wait for the camera to come in. I'm like, oh, well, I got to buy the lighting. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm just, 
okay, well, I got to buy this. Okay, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's just like you're constantly giving yourself excuses. Mm -hmm. And you think you're pushing yourself towards a goal because you got something, you got something or you found something or whatever. You're waiting for this. But in reality, you haven't moved forward at all, you know, because you, you haven't actually started the actual yeah. process. You know, you haven't actually started the, the actual work of sitting down and, right. you know, putting something out there or editing or whatever right. the case may be. So I think it's also like looking at like, what is your intention? Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> if you're like, I want to put out the perfect video ever mm -hmm. then maybe that's the right steps for you maybe yeah. maybe it is getting all the right equipment super super slowly yeah. and then starting it the way that you want to yeah you just better make sure you start it when you get the right you better yet. <laughs> yeah yeah but, and, and but then that's like the, the trade-off right because it's mm -hmm. like there's so much time in between are you doing anything else mm -hmm. especially when it comes to equipment or buying things yeah. like now don't be wrong like, obviously with stuff like this in order to make a podcast i feel like you do need there is mm -hmm. a lot of upfront costs right you know, there's a lot of upfront stuff that you need to get in order but like i think for other things like if you're just trying to make a you know just a video in your camera you know you don't necessarily need the greatest greatest camera mm -hmm. of all time you know you just need whatever's on your phone and a lot of people are very successful just with right. their phone camera or with you know setting up just not even on a tripod like setting right. it up against a book or yeah. something you know so just I think you just got to find that line between, okay, you know, is this going to push me or is this going to like get me close to my goal? You know, do I need this in order to get close right. to my what goal? Right. What do I need? Exactly. And what would be nice? You know, I think mm -hmm. like if you look at like what is the basic foundation of what I need, like to start a podcast, okay, mm -hmm. I need a microphone, I need something to record the stuff into, mm -hmm. and I need a camera, and then I need a guest. Right. That's really all you need. We could be in a dark ass room right now and it right. wouldn't matter. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, it's the content behind it, it's the mm -hmm. quality, and it's, what you're doing, right? Because mm. people can have, like, they could just make a song. Mm. And, like, they have the best. I mean, you see it all the time. There's so many artists mm. who have beautiful studios, like, full of all these things. They have a mixing engineer in there. And the songs is like, okay. Yeah. But, like, what content? And then you see really small creators who are just pouring their hearts into their music. And they don't use all these crazy things because mm -hmm. they don't need it. Yeah. You know? That's true. Yeah, just, like, working with what you have and building just keep building, you know, mm -hmm. just building off of what you have. And then with more new stuff and new, new times, maybe new money, you can get those things and right. keep adding and adding and adding. But, you know, just start, you know, yep. try that, that little, whatever it is that you can do with the smallest amount, just try that, keep going and then pushing forward and forward and forward. R Russ has a really, like, there's this video that he was talking about and he was like, a lot of artists are just saying like, how come I'm not blowing up? Like this is this, and I dropped an amazing song. He's like, he dropped like, I could be saying this wrong, but like almost like 200 songs before he yeah. like actually blew up. Mm -hmm. And it's because he was like, I just kept releasing music. Mm -hmm. There's so much of that music that is ass dog water. <laughs> but like I felt to me, it was great. Mm -hmm. And he's like, and if you don't release stuff and you're trying to become this, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be different if you're just making it for yourself. But mm -hmm. if you're trying to become something, he's like, it's important that you put stuff out so people can see it and they can give you feedback, yeah. right? Because if I make music and like for me, right, if I drop an EP every year mm -hmm. of six songs, mm -hmm. like how are they gonna, how do I even know my target audience? Mm -hmm. How do I know who's listening to me? How do I know what I like about it? What people like about it? I won't have enough data to yeah. like understand, you no, know? That's true. And, and, and I think another point to add to that is that I feel like a lot of creative people, they don't look at themselves objectively. Mm. You know, when we release stuff, we think it's the best thing ever. Yeah, 100%. We, you know, so, but when we release it, you really have to think about, even if it did, like, let's say it didn't blow blow up like you wanted it to, or you didn't get as many views, you have to look at it objectively and, okay, be like, okay, what did I, what did I do? Why is it not? What, what are things around my niche or what, what that I'm doing that are doing successful? Right. Okay, what is it that I, like, very, look at yourself very detailed, mm. you know, and I think going back to, like, dance as well, is just that, you know, when you look at things, and maybe you didn't look as good as you as you didn't like. Don't just say, "Oh well, you know, they just didn't like it because they don't they don't." Know. Yeah, because they mm. they just they're just they're just not they just you know they're not cool like that or whatever the case may be. But you have to look at it and be like, okay, what is it right. that I did? What is it that I can do? What would I like to do better on? Like, keep critiquing yourself yeah. in a sense. And I think that's how you grow. Yeah, you know, that's how you become better that's how you become more known and uh, that alongside with the action of putting things out there to reach your target audience and listening to the feedback from them you can start to develop into like okay you know how do i remain authentic and, and still right. push this stuff out here that I, that i think my audience would like yep okay like what is it that i need to do you know and i think all i could do is make you better yeah and, you know and, and improve your skills overall so. yeah and i think because i think sometimes people will view critiques and criticism as like a personal attack. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, I think it, 
my, my, my coworker said this to me, uh, Bryce said this to me. He was like, all right, when you put out this EP, and mm -hmm. I dropped the EP, he's like, just remember, he saw this quote from this TikTok, and TikTok was like, when you share this with people, your art is not you. Mm -hmm. Your music is not you. Your dance is not you, mm -hmm. right? It's something that you do and you're pouring into, but it's a product. Mm, it is not you. Yeah. Do not attach your identity mm -hmm. with the creative things that you do because then, one, you can't learn, you can't grow from it. Mm -hmm. Two, if someone doesn't like it, it feels like a personal attack to you. Uh, and we do, we go through that. So, I've gone through that so many times. If someone didn't like something, like, mm. like you, you start yeah. looking at them different, you're like, oh, what so you, you don't like me? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's not that I don't like you. It's just that this particular thing, like you said, you have to be able to just detach yourself from it. At least for a second, just give yourself time to, okay, look at it as its own entity. Right. Don't look at it as, a, as in correlation to you. Right. You know, look at it as its own thing and then take that. And it's hard. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's it's hard to take criticism, even on just basic things that I do maybe at, at work or when, with people and people critique me and they say, hey, you know, I didn't really like the way you did this. I'm like... So you don't like me? No, no, no. Yeah. You, don't, you do like me. You just didn't like me. Right. You, you just know? didn't. Yeah. So it's hard to not take it personally, but I think that is the way that you improve. That is the way that you will become, you know, a more well-rounded, a more seasoned, yeah. a more skilled version of yourself. You know, es especially if you're trying to be accepted by others. Yeah. You know, like if especially yeah, if that is your intention yeah. for people to receive the, whatever it is you're creating, then you need to listen yeah, to it. Absolutely. You need to understand their critiques and you know, and obviously like think enough to know or like know enough to that if someone is actually attacking you versus actually for critiquing sure your work. you know because you know there will be a difference there some people will just say you know oh you're trash this and this but not give you anything or right. reason why there's no yeah you know um but like just know like take those critiques when people are actually genuinely trying to help you those are the people who care about you the most yeah you know so and and I, jill said this one time she was like um chew on advice don't swallow it mm. you know and it's like that right there just shows you like if you give me advice on something mm -hmm. i should chew on it to process what about that mm -hmm. can pertain to me and what can i take away from your advice mm -hmm. but i don't have to swallow it if i don't want to mm -hmm. I like that. If, if you mm -hmm. say something to me and i'm like i don't think you know like honestly yeah. i don't know if you know what you're saying mm -hmm. right now you spit it out yeah but if you just take it and you swallow it it's not gonna feel good you're gonna mm -hmm. get a stomachache you're gonna feel like shit. Mm -hmm. you're gonna be like i can't believe they did that to me but if instead if you say this you chew on it you're like, you're like okay mm -hmm. I can see where you're coming from, yeah. but I don't think that that could really help me in any way. But mm. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, Spit it out. I know, know, yeah, because you also got to keep your creative integrity. You mm -hmm. know, you have to be able to say like, okay, regardless of what you think. Right. Well, I, well, I do appreciate your, your criticism. You know, I do think that this was my intention with that. Right. You know, like if you're intending it to be this way and they didn't like that way, then I mean, that's just, it, you just didn't, it just didn't mix, you know, that's yeah. fine. But no kind of like, okay, what's a critique towards the work? Do you understand that critique? Is that something that you actually do want to improve? Okay, then yeah, take that. Mm -hmm. But if something that you, this is the intention with this piece, I maybe you're saying, maybe the lighting was too dark. Right. You know, you say, okay, well, that was my intention. I wanted it to be dark because I wanted to create this ominous feeling. Right. That was the intention. So if they say that, then you're like, okay, that's just a disagreement. Right. Not necessarily the critique. You know, it's just yeah. like, okay. But I think it's important to keep in mind that people have different tastes. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's no way everyone can enjoy the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like I might love oysters. Mm -hmm. And and I, I give it to you and you're like, uh, but but I'm like, dude, I'm no, gorgeous. you have to understand <laughs> these are amazing. Mm -hmm. How do you not like them? Yeah, they're awesome. And mm -hmm. you're like, I just don't yeah, like I them. Just don't <laughs> like them. Yeah, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you know, not everyone's gonna like your work. You yeah. Know? So, and I think that's what you kind of have to get out of your head is that everyone's gonna love this. Right. You know, I think we see uh, this world where, you know, when we go on YouTube or TikTok or Snapchat, whatever the case. The first thing we see is the likes. The first thing we see is the is the views, and we see like everybody saying all these great messages and things like that, or these bad messages, things like that. But you know, we get so accustomed to that that we think that it's either one or all. Like everyone right. likes my thing, or everyone hates my thing. Yep. So you know, and it's like it doesn't even matter that four people liked it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like people like like they'll they'll put like a video out and it's like, oh my god, my YouTube video only got three likes. Three people took the time to watch your video and yeah. like it. Uh huh. Exactly. And I actually, um, I took um, Sora Yang's. Um, Sora Yang is a great dancer, by the way. <laughs> when I wanted to answer, I took her uh, her course during quarantine. It was talking about the the art of business and dance, and she actually said that to be honest, the way to be successful, you only really need a hundred people mm. because if you can find a hundred people, hundred true fans. They, the, who will always stand by you, who will purchase your stuff or whatever the case may be, you can make a successful career, a successful business off of that. Because you only really need 100 people. Right. You know, so, it, yeah, we live in a world where, like, there's 
hundreds of thousands and people get millions of followers but you know to make it to be to be successful to have a sustainable career you don't necessarily need all of that you can find 100 people just think about that's 100 people yeah who buy your stuff care about whatever you're putting out that's a lot of people a lot (laughs) of people a lot of people who can care and you know who actually love the con uh, the, right. the, the art that you put out you know so and, and and it's like those people are intentional people mm-hmm. you know because i think sometimes if you're looking for the millions and all this kind of stuff right there's a lot of those people who don't really care yeah like like if if like you know have uh say drake mm-hmm. has like oh, golly like probably over 100 million followers oh, yeah. how many actually drake might be a bad example because I figure a lot of those people fuck with Drake. Yeah, <laughs> but like, yeah. you know a lot of people probably, a lot of people but, Drake fans. <laughs> but even say 200,000 of those people don't really care mm-hmm. about Drake. Oh, yeah. They just follow Drake because everyone else follows Drake. Mm-hmm. They don't really care what he does. Yeah, they barely not, even like his music. Yeah, there's so many people that all of us, I'm probably sure, probably follow them, never even look at their, their stuff, no. never even watch what they put out. Never seen or, or buy what they, what they you know, they're selling. Like, no, <laughs> there's so many things like that. We just, we just follow them because you know for what but they're not we're not actually adding any type of value right you know so and you're right yeah if you can find 100 people who do actually care about you that's worth so that's a lot you know because you can't even buy 100 people like that like 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 you can't even say like oh i need you you 100 people to do this and da 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 and then you have 100 people that are like or even 100,000 people Mm -hmm. and other than like I mean, I mean, like I look at people's like Instagram followers versus their likes. Mm-hmm. That's a great way to look oh, at it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, I would rather have people seven like, people. Yeah, you yeah. see people like, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 followers or 500,000 followers and their likes kind of is like down it's like, here. Yeah, it's like you know, because likes. all these people aren't interacting with them. Mm-hmm. But then I've seen on the flip side where I've seen people with like 300 followers and they have like uh, 300 likes, you know, yeah. like with very close or even like that. And I'm just like, wow, you know, these people actually care. Right. You know, and I think that's worth so much more. That's so, what matters. Yeah. yeah. It's just like the quality behind it, right? It's mm-hmm. not quantity. And yeah. especially when you're trying to build a business, you try to build a brand, like you want people that are super bought into you, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the things that you're doing and like, not just for a clout or like, cause yeah. I, I would hate to blow up. And then a bunch of people who never F with me come up and they're like, Oh my gosh. And mm-hmm. I'm like, yep. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you didn't want to follow me. Like yeah. you saw all this stuff here. You saw mm-hmm. all this. But then at the same time, right, they always say that thing is like people usually don't support until they see it coming to fruition. Like they, yeah. they don't like until you you made it, yeah. they don't believe it. I know. I saw a quote that said, everybody thinks you're crazy until you actually do it. Then you're mm. a genius. <laughs> you know, and I thought I saw that said. Mm. <laughs> I said, mm, that's delicious. <laughs> that's a great quote. Yeah. Everybody thinks you're crazy until you do it. Then they think you're the And then they most- think you're like what the? yeah and it's just like you know so you got to just just put you out there yeah be, put it of quality make sure that it's good and then do you yeah and people come yeah the people will find you you yeah. know the people you want so right just keep putting that quality content be consistent be yourself mm-hmm. and in time in time things will work out mm-hmm. right don't rush it yeah rush things never work out great mm-hmm. right that's why you have like fast fashion like yeah it might be good for the second then you never yeah. wear it again then you, you know what i'm saying like <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, break. And now we are officially back. Okay. Um, we had some technical difficulties, so don't don't worry about that. Um, anyways, we're back to talk about what you're doing next. Yes. What am I doing next? Yep. Um, right now, I feel like I'm focusing more on... Yeah, I'm going to still be dancing. I'm going to be choreographing more and putting my own work out there. Um, but I'm also kind of taking on this, this writing Mm. aspect of myself now. So really trying to write poetry and just short stories and things of that nature, kind of increasing the, the, my value in words, Mm. you know? So that's what I've been doing. I feel like a lot of reading and things of that nature. Just, I try to write every day now, um, getting some prompts from, I I have this book, that's what I was going to say earlier. I have this book um where it kind of gives it says it's 300 prompts a day mm. and so in it it talks about you know you know just just different prompts it could give you and, and kind of tells you how to be a better writer and things of that nature and i'm trying to see if i can kind of fuse the writing poetry element into the dance as well mm. so um, i actually have this one idea for a concept but you guys will have to follow me to stay soon at nigga at, at, at underscore effect thank you um <laughs> yeah so i will that, that that's definitely the direction i'm going to and just 
um, putting out more of art pieces. Mm -hmm. So just dance and, and writing and directing and more videography stuff. Yeah. So. And just kind of, like you said, like kind of fusing it all fusing together. Fusing it all cause... together. Same way I do my dance the same way yeah. I want to do my other stuff. So, so, so in regards to, to dance, like if somebody is wanting to get into dance, mm -hmm. um, let's start there. If somebody wants to start dancing, mm -hmm. what is your advice for them? What would you say to do? Um, if someone is wanting to start dancing, well, one, I would want to, if I was you, I'd want to figure out what I like about dance, you mm -hmm. know, what, what I like about dance and what type of dance style kind of, you know, like what that I draw and I'm drawn to, you know, and there's so many different types of dance styles out there. Like it's actually yeah, crazy. It's, it's like, fun. it's like languages. Like yeah. there's so many and then there's some you don't even know. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so I kind of would start there, just figure out what exactly is that I would like to dance like, or, you know, what looks captivating, what looks interesting to me. I think when it comes to any type of art form, you kind of have to see it as, as a, like you were a kid again, mm. you know, just like, what looks cool, you know, what looks interesting. Um, and then start there. And then from there, there's actually a variety of different ways you can get into it. You can either start taking classes, you can maybe, you know, I taught myself pretty much when I, in the beginning, I was pretty much teaching myself how to dance. And I think that gave right. me a great foundation mm -hmm. of just bodily movement. Um, so, you know, YouTube, Vimeo, things of that nature. Um, Google can teach you all, all types of things. And I would just keep researching the style, like keep putting, putting yourself in there and always just find a way or even a moment to move. Mm. You know, you can, you can move at any time of the day. You know, the great thing about dance which I feel like is better than, not better, that's my <laughs> word, but I feel like is good about dance as an art form specifically is that you don't have to buy anything. Yeah, that's you true. Don't, you don't have to get anything. All you need is some music. I guess you got to buy the thing to give you some music, but we all got that in our pockets. Yeah, and YouTube's so, free. Yeah, and YouTube's free. So you really only need yourself. And you can always just find a moment to, to move if that's in house or if that's in you know hip hop or any other type of style, you, know, you can always find a moment to move. So just take that and find outlets around you and people around you who also do that thing and kind of just learn from them and grow with them and you know become mm. just get yourself into a community right that way you can always at least develop and if you're kind of tied up of a shy person i would recommend it even more mm. but <clears throat> let's say you're like i'm not doing that and definitely do it at home there's steezy programs too yeah steezy.com definitely has a lot of uh, things you can do in order to get better as a dancer as well yeah so just finding just wait places in time just to dance you know? i think i think that's really great advice because it, it, it doesn't tell people like here's where to start it's almost mm -hmm. just like hey look at like first off what do you like about dance yeah and i think that you, you just got to figure that with, with with anything you know right. i remember when i was trying to learn how to draw i was making it so complicated because i thought i had to take all these things and all these classes i was like really i just need a pencil and paper and i bought a book and it was teaching me how to draw. And I was like, that's all you really need in right. order to learn. And obviously, there's different ways you would like to draw as well. If you want to draw more maybe comic book manga type things. Right. Or maybe you want to draw more realism. Or um, maybe you want to go into painting or things like right. that. You know, there's always different types of drawing techniques as well as dances. You know, as well. So you just find that thing that you're interested in. Learn about it. Research mm -hmm. it. And then try for yourself. Right. And that's what's important. Like, look, what do you want out of it? Yeah. You know, what, what, is, what is your intention <laughs> Benji, <laughs> like, what is your intention? What is your why? Because um, I think that the why is always the strongest thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like, man, I want to do windmills so bad. Like, it just looks so cool. Mm -hmm. And I want to start here. I want to. Then that's strong because you really want to do it, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, I just want to dance. I want to start break dancing. Mm -hmm. If you don't give yourself, you don't know what you like about break dancing. You don't know why. You don't know what you would like to learn about it. Mm -hmm. It's really hard for you to even get started because it will always seem so overwhelming. Yeah, no, you know? true. And uh, kind of similar to what we were talking about earlier, just take that same idea of focusing or like mm. taking all these bad uh, ideas that you have yeah. and focus into the, you know that one thing. Like give yourself those those parameters to work under. Saying, okay, I want to learn this. I'll look at this today. Taking pretty much everything that we said, hey, I will look at this day. I'll only do it for five minutes, and this is what I'm going to focus in. Right. You know, so just t taking that and, you know, that's how you'll be able to just learn, mm -hmm. one, anything, but especially dance, you know. Yeah. Just finding, finding that time, finding that outlet, and finding what it is you like about it, and mm -hmm. just kind of go from there. And Yeah. I think if, if you just really lead with curiosity, like, yeah. curiosity will bring you to so many places that you never thought you'd be able to go, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, you might have an ideal route in your head of how you want to be and, and how you want to learn, how you're going to learn. But mm -hmm. like, 
you'll just end up being like going astray and just yeah. like being able to explore it in like a childlike manner, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most fun part about anything is don't take it too seriously. Yeah. Like allow yourself to fuck up, mm -hmm. allow yourself to kind of just be you yeah. and like just fall in love with it, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, Hey, that's a good, <laughs> you better end it off like that. <laughs> just fall in love with, just fall in love with it. Yeah. No, I, I, I definitely agree. And anybody, you know, it's just like Ratatouille. Anybody can cook, anybody can dance, mm. you know? Mm. Anybody, we even like I, like we said earlier, is just you know even just talking. That's a way of communication. You know, that's yep. a way of dancing. Um, so, so you're already a dancer. Yeah, you're already. <laughs> I tell I tell a lot of people like especially JoJo's like I'm not a dancer. I'm like you can you can dance. you can dance you can dance. You right? can, any anyone can, and that's the great mm. thing about it. I think anybody can dance. Yeah. Anybody can make music. Anybody anybody can, you can really do anything you want. Yeah, there's no limitations unless you have limitations yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, like. If there's something limiting and pulling you back and holding you back, of course you're not going to be able to do it. Yeah. You like say you're you not going to be able to do it. You, you know? already have the capability. You know, yeah. you already, like it, with anything, you already, you know, we, we make mu music or we, we hum or even the way we speak is in a sense music, you know, mm -hmm. it's a sense sound. So, you know, you already have the capability, you already have foundation. It's just building it into specific skill, you mm. know, taking whatever it, the actual, maybe you want to look like a certain thing, then you have to work at that, yep. you know, but we all have that capability, mm. all that functionality. So just try mm. it. Keep going. Mm. Get in it. Let them know. Mm. Let them know. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Thanks for coming on the mm. very first episode of the Create Yourself Podcast. Stay tuned for many, 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 many more. Uh, and like always, uh, if you want to find Nick, wh wh where can they find you? They can find me, look. N underscore effect. I said it earlier, but we'll say it twice just so y'all know. N underscore effect on Instagram. Or you can go to my YouTube channel. I'm actually going to say this live, but nobody knows about this YouTube channel but me. But it's abstract. A-B-S-T-R-A-K-T. <laughs> Let's go. We got it. We got it. We secured the bag, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what this whole it. podcast was for. We just wanted to oh, know God, your did YouTube. I just say that? Cut it out. Cut <laughs> it out. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> 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 I appreciate you. Uh, it's always a Thank great you, time. <laughs> and yeah, like always, love yourself, be yourself, and create yourself. And have a great damn day. Peace. Oh, that's really good. <laughs>